An outsider, putting all the common threads in stories about crossing the bar together, cannot help but draw certain conclusions. You must always treat the sea with total respect, for it's always powerful and all too often seems capable of being frighteningly unpredictable. Things get very physical when the going gets rough. And even the most experienced of skippers suffers battle damage in bad situations. Mental reactions kick in afterwards. Sometimes quite a bit afterwards. And events at sea can take a long-term emotional toll, not just on you, but on the people around you as well, especially your friends and families on shore, and your crew and their friends and families. Surely there can be no better people to tell you this than the people who've been there, done that. So, over to them. Let the skippers tell you themselves the important stuff in their own words. Crossing a bar is a risky business and always will be. Some days you'll hear in towards the bar thinking it's not too bad and you might get one out of the blue that might just stand up and you'll wear it. We were coming in just on daylight, high tide, and we got picked up by one from nowhere. That fired clean on me back on the floor. Managed to jump up, pull the revs off, take my head to see which way we were going. By that stage we'd gone around about 180 degrees. And I said the vessel doesn't just roll over, it actually gets physically picked up and thrown on its side. My crew reckon I was thrown off that wheel about three times down on the deck and I don't even remember being down there. He said you just bounced clean off the floor straight back to the wheel. I had both hands on the uh, spinner leaning down trying to uh, force the wheel around. Of course when it came, when it did go down, I, I was going down and the spokes on the other side of the wheel were going up and uh, I still got the scar under the chin where I pretty knocked myself out. Just the concussion of the waves hitting the boat was enough to drive her out of gear every time and it takes about 140 pounds to drive that gear lever into gear. When you get a scare on the bar, which can happen occasionally, you uh, straight away you get a, um, a dry, dry feeling in your mouth and, uh, and, and, sta and sta like standing off a bar at a distance, um, you get that and associated with, uh, yeah, with a dry mouth as you tend to have uh, nervous pisses, and quite a few of those. You know, if you're sitting off the bar for an hour, you know, up to eight or ten of them, and I can tell you it's a relief. You, know, you tend to go and have a nervous one first, uh, and the knees are shaking sometimes afterwards if it has been a bit dodgy. That's usually when you know you've probably pushed it a bit far. Uh, when I got round the corner, I lifted my hands off the steering wheel and said to the crew, I said, have a look at this. My hands were like that. My knuckles were white from holding on to the wheel tight in the throttle and uh, rolled myself a cigarette and tried to calm myself down as we went up the harbour. Oh hell yeah, when you're upside down all you can see is the, all the water in all your windows. Yeah, it takes a wee while for it to go away. Mm. Um, well if it's a scary trip you know if you get the odd one that picks you up and heaves you and and, and you're working hard on the wheel, you get you get a bit of a, an adrenaline rush, you know, and and, and uh, it's a roller coaster ride, you know, on a 30 foot, 40 foot boat, sort of 12 tons <laughs> shooting down a wave. Um, knees knees go a bit weak sometimes, if you know, if it's a bit scary. I've actually um, stood there and seen my kneecaps bloody uh, quivering, and there's nothing you can do to stop that. I'm afraid. It's I usually empty my bladder before I arrive, just in case, you know. Don't you worry, many of the time is my heart's being in my mouth. You just about want a pair of Grundies there that have got a hole in the back of them so you don't make a mess of them. I was down at the tip this day watching all the boats come in, in the tuna season, and a lot of the boats were getting a rough ride over the bar, and this particular boat got a wee way up the river and he'd had quite a good ride in, rough. And I sort of looked over and he had a big smile on his face 
and the crew were in the, was in the background laughing and pointing. His, and he had no, his bare legs, all he had on was this t-shirt. And the next thing he just up with a pair of underpants and threw them out over the, over the overboard into the river. And I think it was his way of saying, I was shitting myself and here's my underpants. <laughs> yeah, but he'd made it home. I'd like my family to come home at night and prefer they keep doing that for as long as I'm around anyway. I like down the tub, I always see the boat go. I like to go down till it's gone out over the bar and gone to sea. And if I know the weather's good, I go down and I'll watch it come in, if it's in the daytime. Quite often Stuart will say to me, oh, I'll give you a ring when I'm coming up to the bar. And it might be a little bit rough or lumpy, and he'll ring me when he's going up the river so I don't see him coming in. I don't think he wants me to be, be there sometimes. And if anything ever happens on the boat, I never ever hear it from him. Never, never, never. If he's been taken by a big wave, given him a big fright, or if anything's happened, I hear it from everybody else, but he never, ever <laughs> says a word. <laughs> 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 yeah. Ever. Not once. I don't like watching the boats come in when it's rough. I think it's the thought of being powerless, not being able to do anything if something happens. It's an eerie feeling, the stomach just turns inside out. We've got the memorial stone down at the tip now, and it's probably been there about 10 years. There were so many fishermen drowned at sea, and some on the bar, and their bodies were never found. So the families really had nowhere to, not, like a cemetery, you could go up to the cemetery and place a bunch of flowers. The families had sort of nowhere because they had no body. And that was one of the reasons the memorial stone went to the tip, so they had somewhere to grieve. Oh, there's a lot of plaques there now, and I'd know every single one of them. Some of them were close, some good friends. But it also stands there for all the fishermen to see when they come in over the bar. And it made a lot of them feel very uncomfortable when it went up there. No fisherman setting out to sea wants to be reminded of the consequences of getting it wrong. But perhaps it's useful to be reminded about the real importance of getting it right. And getting it right is what the next part of this video is all about. <laughs>